Breakfast puppies, dinner puppies, lunch puppies. Ain't no thing. I'll dust all them puppies because I'm Jebediah. I'm the farmer over here. I got all your dust and puppy needs. This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. We're all set to begin, so let's dive right in to bikers, dice, and bars. Talking bicycles and motorbikes, gamer things and all the like. You can listen to it in your cars, but mostly it's about... Hey everyone, this is NPC. Due to a major amount of time crunch, this next tiny batch of episodes was edited in more of a rush than our usual process. I really wanted to get the entire 2020 backlog cleared out so I could start 2021 with a clean desk, but I didn't have a lot of time to do it. As such, our usual commitment to a higher standard is not quite as heavy here, and I apologize if the sound quality is just a bit off. Well, this quick edit batch ends with the final episode of our Mothership actual play series. So if you want to skip ahead, we totally understand, but we did have a lot of fun doing it. So we hope you give it a listen. And speaking of Mothership, this collection of RPG sessions was not initially meant to be a Biker's Dice and Bars release. We didn't actually have an exact plan for what to do with it at the time that we recorded it. So we just sort of freeformed it. And I'm pretty sure we totally screwed up the rules too, but hey, we had a lot of fun doing it and we hope you have a lot of fun listening. Anyway, on to the actual episode. Welcome to our first recording of the Mothership role-playing game. I'm not quite sure how long we're going to be taking this, but I've been wanting to run this game for quite a while Finally got together a group, and I want to see how, at least how long that these eh, uh, happenstance individuals can survive out into the harsh world of a starship graveyard. I'm NPC. I am the game master, or as this system calls it, the warden, and I'll have you guys introduce yourselves, my fellow players. I am Poppy Beaujolais. I am playing a bounty hunter named Mads. And she is as gorgeous as she is dangerous. And all I've got to say about her is do not get between her and her goal. Hi, I'm Eleanor. I'm playing Tulip, a bioadaptate android created by the Promethean Corporation. Um, If I were you, I'd watch out for the sinister Dr. Bernard. (laughs) I'm just Jacob. I'm playing Donald O'Toole. Donnie to his friends. Damage control technician first. Er third class, and uh, be careful around men with no pants. <laughs> I'm the Dr. Xander Gerrymander. I'm playing Rexor Slate, the one of the bounty hunter, the better part of the Mad Slate bounty hunter do over there with Mads over there. And uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to maybe don't stick random hallucinogenics up her arse. I don't know what to say about that, but just don't do it and cry or sleep. It might not end well. I'm Alan Edwards, a.k.a. Abraham Lincoln. I'm playing the Jolly Roger. And I'm an ex-convict. And I've been smoked a couple times and they weren't able to kill me. And I feel like I'm immortal and pants are optional. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I do have to ask a question here, Alan. Tell me more about what you mean by you are Abraham Lincoln. (laughs) I'm an Abraham Lincoln lookalike. I go around doing Abraham Lincoln as a job. Oh, professionally? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought you were just like riffing off the beard. <laughs> oh, no, no, I no, do no. that too. <laughs> <laughs> First time I saw you, you were in the full getup and I did a triple take. It's it's amazing, the resemblance that you have. It's really not, yeah. not, It's really hard not to stare at you and be like, yeah. the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> and earlier I showed... Showed my uh, picture of Abraham Lincoln on a Harley. That was it's that bad. was me. It's that really was me. good. It's really good. What? Well, I think we have some interesting adventures in store for you, listener. So we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Our story opens on the interstellar cruise ship Jade Elegy, which is currently punching through the void on its way to the great city station. 
Prospero's dream. What brings each of you on this ship? Why are you heading in a cryopod to this city? Who wants to go first? After being released from prison because my extermination didn't go very well and I'm still smoking. (laughs) I figure I'm looking for the best chef there is in the galaxy and he must be there. I'm picturing they set you in the chair and pulled that lever, held it down for a moment, Mm -hmm. pulled it back up. I got a little tingle. Pull it a second time just to be sure. And I got failed. a little more tingle. Like, okay, whatever. Mm. Uh, we don't want you here. So they kicked you out and put you on a ticket to get the hell to the farthest away station that was possibly found in the galaxy from the planet that you were on. And stuff some credits in my bag. And I'm also thinking, too, that when they put him in the pod, his pod is the only one that's just filled with this acrid haze that's still coming off of him. <laughs> Yeah, his cryo fluid is like more of an amber color, while everyone else's is sort of a greenish blue, like a like a, a pleasantly gross teal. <laughs> well, me and Mads over here are uh, on this as we have got a hot tip that over on this new city is our next mark. So we're over there as the part of Mad Slate bounty hunting team going to go and take down uh, the notorious Slovely. Slovely Ashkenov. That's our next mark. We're looking for him. Ashkenov. Okay. Now, what is this Ashkenov guilty of? We don't deal with guilt. Yeah, I just... <laughs> we deal with marks. We get, a, just we get a job we take. Ash, right? We don't ask questions. It's We don't pass judgment. We don't ask questions. We find the mark. We bring them in. We get paid. That's the job. The less you know, the better. This is the way. <laughs> God. Armed and dangerous? Of course he is. Next. So two bounty hunters, both with, uh, did you pick the same loadouts of gear or did you go no, for different no. No. setups? Okay. I picked extermination. Oh, got you. So you got all the weapons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I picked examination because after she goes and plugs them full of holes, I have to go and patch them up long enough to collect her bounty. <laughs> also, he has the pain pills and the powdered xenomorph horn. Okay. And uh, I have so many yeah. things to stop pain and give you more health just long enough. <laughs> Well, we're not quite certain what the Xenomorph Horn actually does. <laughs> but we'll, we'll all find try out it by the end. Right? Yeah. 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 What could possibly go wrong? I'll yeah. go next. Okay. My name is Tulip. I'm a bioadaptate. That means I don't remember the moment when I became conscious. I don't remember the moment in which I was dispensed. But Dr. Storer and Dr. Bar- Bernard those humans who have shown me the most kindness, assure me that even before I became conscious, I had dreams of this place that I'm going to, Prospero's Station. I was not designed, if if one can say that I was designed, one cannot say that I was designed to be interested in archaeology. But my minders are, have invested a great deal in my creation, in understanding the tech stack from which I come. So they give me a certain amount of latitude. It was with that latitude that I found this bone knife. (laughs) And it is with that very same latitude and 200 credits in my pocket that I am taking this voyage to Prospero's dream. So I have to follow this up now. Have you ever used the bone knife? I've not. Okay. It seems improper to use it for something simple, something common, like cutting vegetables for one of my minders. And I have not yet had the need or opportunity to stab someone or something (laughs) with it. All right. Uh, Donald Donald O'Toole at your service. Uh, Damage control technician first, or third class. Uh, I'm working my passage to Prospero. Uh, you know, staying uh, out of out of trouble down down in the down low. Uh, you know, they don't want me racking up any more uh, mandatory visits to substance abuse treatment. Uh, the the Merchant <laughs> Marine frowns on it after a while, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, yeah, I'm working my passage, damage control technician at your service. Fantastic. Now, Tulip, I'm going to bring this back to you. Being an android. You don't have to go into cryo sleep for these long journeys through hyperspace. First, let me correct you. I'm a bioadaptate. 
Android is a category, a legal category that I fit into. But yes, your point. Please continue. (laughs) Duly noted. You are given the option then. Being a citizen coming on here of your own accord, they can put you in. They don't necessarily have to put the fluids around and inject you with all the things that put normal people of the flesh out. Yes. What do you choose? How long will the voyage be if I'm not asleep? The voyage? So here's the deal. The voyage for you, being awake during the time, would probably take about two weeks. However, here's the deal with hyperspace in this setting. Going into hyperspace, you come out at an unknown period of time. will pass around you. Sometimes you can go in for a couple of weeks in hyperspace and, you know, maybe a few days have passed in the real world. Sometimes you come out and years have passed. And depending upon the longer voyage, like if you go into the higher states of hyperspace for longer distances, who knows? Sometimes you might come out before you left. Oh, okay. Well, then I certainly (laughs) would not need to go to sleep. Um, And in fact, I would be in, during the entire length of the voyage, I would be in the observation bay looking out into uh, the void around us as we travel. The rest of you got on board, put your belongings in a a sealed case that was shoved up above all the cryopods and numbered and tagged to your bodily fluids, and then put into Hmm. these tubes jammed with needles. Then you were surrounded by all of this goo and lights out. Are we naked? Yes. Okay. So all of our our equipment is... Is, is stored. We don't have any of it on our person in the tube. You do not have any of it on your person in the tube. Got it. How many people are on this ship? The ship has about a hundred. Okay. It is a light transport okay. going through space. Is it a live crew or is it run by computer slash machine slash android slash bioadaptives? That is a good question. The computer. I'm going to roll. There are a couple of live technicians, okay. but for the most part, it's automated. Okay. Everything is done by computers in this sector from which you're coming. Uh, ships around here frequently don't even have pilots, except like the pilot's someone who is tagging along just to make sure that occasionally he might have to get up and press a button and then go back down to his nap. Where are we coming from? Where you're coming from doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> so Tulip, again, I've got a thing I want to want to do here because you've got an interesting story with your creator. What was their name again? Well, the corporation is the Promethean Consortium, and the two doctors that were both driving the project and most involved in my, I guess, a human would call it upbringing, were Doctor Storer and Doctor Bernard. Okay, tell me about tell me about them. Um, Dr. Storer is about five foot eight. He weighs 320 pounds. His teeth are missing in most cases. Um, he's a brilliant mathematician. What else would you like to know about Dr. Storer? He's these a very are, kind man. That sounds like these are facts that are important for you to remember about someone. Ah. Right? I'm yes, guessing? Okay. Absolutely. What about Dr. Bernard? Dr. Bernard is approximately five foot six <laughs> inches tall. He weighs um, approximately 210 pounds. He is uh, somewhat less jovial under normal circumstances. He is primarily a um, software engineer, I suppose. Although his qualifications are at the doctorate level. When you last saw them. Yes. What was that like? How did it all go down? They, I've spoken to them many times about the dreams that I have. Dr. Bernard was encouraging me to read up on human psychological manipulation techniques meant to compartmentalize um, unpleasant experiences. Um, I guess these are used in therapies. Whereas Dr. Storer was more understanding and was more interested in me exploring. Apparently he comes from some tradition on old earth that is uh, non-scientific. It was his idea. Uh, they had some some form of an argument that I could hear. They were down the hall. They argued at some length about whether to uh, agree to my request 
And um, Dr. Storer won the day. Dr. Bernard was very upset. Dr. Bernard was very upset at this, actually. He was, In yes. fact, in this particular moment, like, he storms out of the area that they had wandered away to have this discussion. And he comes up to you and is looking you over one last time before you were about to leave. Yes. And he goes back into his spiel, but this time is like much closer to your to your face, to your your, your audio receptors. And yes. he's talking more about unlocking those inner demons. And the words that are coming out of his mouth are actually a little bit foreign sounding. Sure. And they're starting to come through now. Do you? Are you much good with languages? Yes, I'm okay. trained in um, a great number of languages. It sounds when he starts talking like you can first make out the words of the common language that he is using. And then one by one, little words of his diatribe, as he's getting a little bit more excited, start mm. being replaced with other words from other languages. Fascinating. Now, your cyber brain is picking through it, formulating things, cross-referencing, mm-hmm. structuring how what he's what I think he's trying to say. Absolutely. And then other words start pouring in. Wonderful. That you've never heard. Or they sound like drunken slurs of mm. words that he might be wanting to say. And he's getting a whole lot more animated. Mm. The other doctors coming up and uh, did not initially hear this. Mm-hmm. But now that he has come in and looked through the door and sees what's happening. He looks very upset. What was his name again? Dr. Storer. Dr. Storer. He actually you know, huffs himself up and very steadily stomps over and opens his mouth to voice some kind of complaint in the mm-hmm. moment. Like, no, this is not what we planned on. This, uh, this, you agreed. And then the doctor that is whispering these words of chaos, his eyes flash Mm. as if something's happening inside him. The only time you've ever seen those, that flash of eyes is your reflection Mm. when you've watched playback of your own vision happening, analyzing scenes. And he looks, he's still looking at you and still whispering and he turns his hand back Mm -hmm. and his fingers become long tendrils that reach back and T-1000 style pierce Dr. Storer's head. Blood drips back and he just leaves his hand standing, uh, hanging there behind him. Doesn't even acknowledge anything. Dr. Storer has stopped. Uh It's beginning to slide down and those blades are cutting upwards through his skull and Uh then... He's down um, on the ground. As soon as he falls to the ground, um, I'm looking very levelly at um, Dr. Bernard. And I stab him in the throat with a bone knife. <laughs> All right. Let's do some combat then. Wonderful. How, how do you feel about this? What is your motivation for stabbing him? What's going on in your head when this happens? The, the two of them have avoided um, bringing me to points of emotional intensity. And Dr. Bernard in particular was very careful to teach me to contain my emotions. I would say that I am under, underneath, I'm very upset because Dr. Storer was kind to me. Um, but intellectually, I'm taking this action because there are other people in this research station and Dr. Bernard is not permitted to murder them. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. What you're going to do then is you're going to make a speed check. Oh, Roll dear. <laughs> percentile dice and you want to get under your speed. Okay. Uh, boy, did I miss that. What did you get? Well, let's call that, actually, they're the same color. So most charitably, a 78. Okay, 78. Next time you roll, if you have dice that are not percentile. That's what I'm going for. Be sure to make sure that go. you note which one yeah, is yeah, the 10th yeah, yeah. digit. Normally, they would be different colors. But either way, that's, I'm but guessing I've either one of those. I've got a 10. I've got a 10. See right there. 10s yeah. <laughs> and 1s. Sweet. Uh, that was a failure? Oh, Yeah. So uh, first, those who pass act before the enemies do. Okay. Uh, Those who fail act after. So you passed. Critical success will give you an extra action, while a critical failure reduces you to only one action. Uh, This repeats every round. You re-roll and re-roll and re-roll. Okay. Well, you move to stab him with this knife, and you're moving in to uh, jam it into his neck. Ooh, that's a good roll. 
he is moving his other hand to strangle you and <laughs> hold you up. And he is moving to grab you. So this is called close quarters combat. Okay. And I'm making, I've made my check. So you can decide whether you want to oppose that roll with your armor save, which is to kind of defend against the damage, or you can make another combat check to counterattack or a body save to try and get out of combat and move away. I'm assuming you're just going to keep moving with the stab. Oh, yes, absolutely. Then what you will do is also roll a combat check. Uh, past that, I rolled a 29 against a 41. Okay, 29 against a 41. We both hit, which means we both do things to each other. Great. <laughs> okay. Damage. Uh, whenever you lose an opposed combat check, you take damage, which is subtracted from your health. So roll the damage of your bone knife. And I'm going to roll the damage that is coming from his now strangely streamlined and mutated hand pushing up against your neck. Okay, so his bone knife sucks. I did five points of damage to him. I'm going to have to stab him like 15 times. (laughs) Okay, he lifts up and you feel your neck, like bits of it are starting to strain and pop. Okay. Uh, You take 13 damage. Goodness gracious. And three points of stress as the madness of this moment is coming in. Okay. Am I going to make it out of character creation? (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. We, we've all really acted this round, so let's... Uh, oh, no. Now it is, it's essentially your turn. You chose to carry forward with the attack, so you get to do something else if you want. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I think because I'm not of a... I'm not a human... I I split my mind into two portions and think about two (laughs) different things. On one hand, I resume, I I, clearly he's attempting to damage my throat. So I attempt to um, sever the tendons on his forearm. So he'll have to let go of me. But the other portion of my mind is processing linguistically what it was that he was saying to me. I'm just trying to understand what has happened to this person who, although unkind, has taken care of me for the um, two or three for the for the two years and seven months that I've been alive. So, do you wish to focus more on taking an action against him? <laughs> which which of these do you wish to do? Oh, I must prioritize. What's, 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 your, what's your priority here? Well, I do suppose that if my head is severed from the rest of my body, that would make it a little difficult for me to process. So I'm going to try to cut the tendons in his forearm so that he'll be forced to let go. Okay, that's going to be a combat check. Okay. Uh, easily passed. And I oh, am... Oh, it's a 22, actually. So that's a, get, uh, so it's a crit something. That is a critical success. Okay, cool. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty good. He is also going to make a combat check against you. He is simply going to take that damage and... Oh, ooh, very nice. Uh, he also hurts you again. Okay. So what you're going to do is for a critical hit... Oh, that's a... How, how do... Yours has the effect of... No, oh, he would have to make a panic roll, and, but... There's a special thing preventing him from needing to do that. <laughs> I wonder what that is. <laughs> Possessed by the Cthulhu. Roll the damage of your knife. Okay, which is damage of my knife. Yeah. Uh, two. I'm trying to sever the tendons on his for- forearm, so right, cutting it right along his uh, the the inside of his arm. We'll go with that. You succeed in cutting off that arm entirely. It okay. drops you down. <laughs> the All knife right. breaks, shatters apart as this happens. Great. Aww. Goodbye, bone knife. All right. He. Turns to you and just screams. And it is a scream that echoes throughout your entire being. Every one of your atoms screams back in return. All right. I need for you to make a fear save. Fear save. Okay. Well, that's really easy for me. Um, Yeah. Massively made that. Oh, nice. That's actually really good. Okay. As he does this, his arm has fallen off. The hand that is on your throat is splitting into two. The bones that have been severed are now curving up as if they are going to stab you in the eyes. And Uh you see in front of you this man 
splits in half from head down to sternum, falls to either side, and bits of bone start to curve around, forming some kind of a battle spike visage, and he screams again, and the words begin to translate in your brain. Okay, good, good. They translate to... Complete the visage. Open the gate. We can be together. Over and over and over and over again. Okay. And then it concludes Mm -hmm. with the words, this is your purpose. Uh, This is how it shall be. He doesn't understand. And then static appears across your vision. And the scene freezes. A little blinking dot appears in the lower right corner. And everything starts to turn into static and fuzz like a dead channel in the 80s. Okay. Kids today won't get that reference, unfortunately. (laughs) I mean, they might have watched Stranger Things, so. And then (laughs) you finish booting up. So I wake up, basically. You wake up from one humdinger of a dream. Mm. The stress remains. The damage is gone. You never destroyed your knife. (laughs) I have to uncross out my bone knife. You awaken in a room, overly sterile, teal-colored room, brightly lit with flickering fluorescence. You actually feel totally fine. You had a strange dream, but you're used to that at this point. I am. It's true. Yep. Looking around this room, you see a handful of other cryotubes Mm -hmm. that have been loaded up and are being opened. And there are others in the room as well that are coming out of these tubes. They appear to be in various states of awakenedness. Some are thrashing. Some are still sleeping. There is a couple of technicians walking around in not the most hygienic of wear, putting needles in them, pressing buttons and trying to wake them up. Oh, they use the same needle twice. Different people. Yeah. Oh. It appears as if the cryotubes have been moved into this room on a track. That extend to somewhere else, you feel and are aware of a slightly different hum under oh. your feet and around you. You are clearly not on the same ship. Mm. I get up. You turn and look at the cryotube closest to you. Mm-hmm. Waking up is Jolly. Your eyes yeah. open. I'm. It was one hell of a ride. You had some kind of. Cool dreams, I guess. Dreams of freedom. Dreams Heavenly of making dreams. money. Yeah. Dreams of some... Like I've gone in and out of life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a few times it was terrifying, but whatever. You've but had, it's all you... over now. It's all good. Yeah. You had worse dreams when you were in the pen. I feel almost immortal. <laughs> <laughs> After being zapped by lightning twice and surviving, then yeah, you're, you're basically yeah. immortal. Yeah. You come to, you are naked. You are covered in this goo... Again, yours is slightly amber colored, but for some reason. <laughs> and you're looking around, a little disoriented. I see an android. You, you see, describe your character. Describe your uh, characters. Yes. I would say Tulip has purple hair, long hair. Um, she's approximately 5'8". She, is, she looks to first pass like a human. Can that long hair be used as a towel? No. No, I mean, maybe possibly, but you'd have to ask and try that. (laughs) Um, The the main main tell that she is not a human is that when she moves, you can see seams around of like fixture, like along her jawline, around the edges of her of her neck, like in in the hinges of her fingers. Yeah, she so she's like looks mostly human, but like that's probably your first impression. But after a moment or two, and certainly after she starts talking to you, you're clear on her not being. But the only thing I want to know is where is my towel? Hello. Where is my towel? I have no idea where your towel is. <laughs> I is this the ship that you in, that you booked passage on? I didn't book it, and this is where I ended up. Who knows? Interrupting, like moving in between the two of you, is one of these not quite so sterile dressed orderlies uh, they have like a, a pad which is bleeping and blooping and there's a little color and actually there's a fizzle in one corner it looks like this pad has seen better days it's maybe like some kind of a scrap does, does, does the tech nearest to us have a name tag uh the name tag 
They do. The name tag says Straff. Um, it's Mr. Straff. And the tech continues. He's working. He's he's got this needle, and uh, he moves over to to poke you with it. He looks hey, at Straff, you. I back off and say, "Hey, where's my towel?" <laughs> I, I, that's that's his problem, Mr. Straff. He points to the door behind him. You'll get a towel in a bit. Excuse me, Mr. Straff. What ship are we on? So he keeps going. He moves in. Can I stab you? I'm you I'm avoiding that. All right. You, you, Tetanus is a real thing here, man. You gotta uh, make sure you just stab me. Right. Doom, doom. Just stab me. Do you keep trying to get his attention? Yes. Okay. I'm very After persistent. a moment, he notices that you're talking to him. He's like, uh, oh, that's not my name. I'm Cody. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? What ship is this? You, uh, it's not my place, but let's just say it your rival was most serendipitous. Now I'm going to move over here. I've got to take care of this fella. I think I think he's actually choking on something. Hold tight. No, <coughs> uh, hey, hey, chill out. I got to stab you. Hold on. No, you give me your stab you. Oh yeah. Oh god. Oh man, I haven't had a wake up like that in about five years since the last time I was in one of those Alethean brothels. What is going on? Because of that rude wake up, you're going to get six stress. <laughs> it's a terrible way to come out of hypersleep. Also, that's when you notice, you look over at Straff. He's just jabbed you with something. He pulls the needle out, looks at it, opens the back of the syringe, takes out this like little vial, pours something in it, closes it back up, wipes the needle on his <laughs> shirt, and then moves over to your unconscious partner. I stop him. <laughs> I grab him by the back of his shirt. And I go, listen here, you low down son of a bitch. You're going to tell me what the fuck is you just putting that vial right there, or you're going to be picking up your goddamn teeth on the floor. I'm going to grab him and try to take off his shirt so I can use it as a towel. <laughs> 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 he's demonstrating he's already willing to wipe stuff on it. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Let me look at these character sheets. <laughs> what are these numbers again? Here's what I'll do. I will have both of you make a speed roll. Now, uh, this doesn't count in armor because if you had a vac suit, ignore it. Again, you're naked. Yep. So base speed, roll percentile, get speed or less. Below my speed. Above my speed. Okay. Did any of you get matched or doubles? Nope. Okay. No. Jolly, what was your roll below your speed? 47. My speed's 49. Down. Oh, you beat him. I got a yeah. 40 on the dot for his oh, well. speed. So you win this. You, you grab <laughs> yeah. his. Uh, sure. So here's Basically actually. Tear it off him. Here's how I'm seeing this go down. <laughs> Cody, Straff Cody, Cody Straff. Uh, whatever you want to call him. He sees you moving at him uh, slight. He's like, no, he, he pulls back before. He hasn't stabbed your partner yet, but he does manage to pull away from you. So you don't succeed in personally stopping him, but you do succeed in like scaring him off. And he backs into <laughs> the cryo tube for Jolly here, where Jolly's like, mine. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And he's like, what the, what? <laughs> and he flails a bit. Man down, man down. Mm -hmm. uh, he flails a bit and Jolly, that syringe is on a collision course to your body. Do you want to try and stop it? No, not at all. <laughs> I just won the shirt. You've survived worse. Yeah, he obviously yeah. can't die, so. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, it goes right in. Uh, you take five damage because it's it, it is not a medically sound procedure, <laughs> and a tingle. Uh, I would like for you to make a fear save. All right, sixty-eight. So I'm going insane. No, <laughs> so I'm going insane. <laughs> that uh, was you, quick. You, you take another two points of stress. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's not that much to worry about. Just a little bizarre, you just but got I got stabbed the shirt. By a needle but I got and shirt. It's been in how many bodies? You know, oh, not enough, whatever. right? Not, not enough. enough. Eh. Still going to go after this You're motherfucker. After I'm still 
peacefully sleeping. No, you're here. coming awake right now. Okay. There's a big commotion. Okay. You're naked. You're covered in uh, kind of. You're cold. You're clammy. There's this dripping cryo gel all around you. Mm. Hey, sleep. Give me a second. I go after Cody's stuff again, and I'm going to go like. I'm going to try to grab him by his throat, push him against the wall, and demand to know what's. I need you to tell me what is in that goddamn vial you just stabbed that guy with that you were about to stab my partner with. Otherwise, again, you'll be mopping the teeth with your goddamn teeth. Okay. Make a speed roll here. Again. Again. <laughs> uh, my speed is 38. I rolled a 36. Mm. Ooh. You again, a beat Cody, and he's reaching. He, he's reaching down as if he's about to like grab something out of his side, but you manage to slam him up against the wall before he can do that and knock his his arm to the side. I want to go and like, reach around, reach around to see <laughs> Hello. what he was going to go and grab. I'm going to try to grab that thing that he was trying to grab from his back pocket. Or whatever he was. Uh, he was reaching for a gun. I'm going to grab it. So bef- as you're about to do that. While this is going on, so was a gun in the pocket of a shirt. Yeah, he's sort of actually wearing it tucked into his pants. <laughs> yeah, this is a really professional operation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. While this is going on, Donnie, you've actually already woken up and are just sort of sitting here watching all this happen. Oh yeah, I roll out of the tube and shove my finger down my throat and puke it up. <sighs> oh God, is that dude ship's crew or station crew? You've never seen him before, and he is certainly not dressed like anybody who was on the ship. Uh, he's shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> no more name tag. No more. I go, uh, no concern of mine. Has he dropped the injector? Oh, he has long since dropped the injector. Like oh. After being grabbed by him and having his coat ripped off of him, and then he's, he's basically being attacked by people here. This is, this is, he's not having a good day. <laughs> Whatever. I walk across, pick it up, <laughs> myself in the arm. This is standard. Okay. Oh, sorry. We'll get to you in a second. Tulip, do you do anything during all of this or do you just watch? I'm watching Cody and these two. They seem kind of insane. I see this person, Donnie, as it will turn out later, and they seem very competent. Um, So I turn to Donnie and I say, "Um, hello, I'm Tulip. Oh, Tulip. Uh, Donald O'Neill or O'Toole. I'm the uh, damage control technician on the ship. Uh, so uh, what brings you this way? In our day, your friends of yours? Uh, absolutely not. Huh? Um, ah. But they may perhaps someday become. Huh? Um, I'm traveling to Prospero's Dream. But it seems as though we're not on the same ship anymore. Are now, you the maintenance engineer for this ship? When you ask that question, mm-hmm. you're reaching over to try and get the gun off of his hip. You're... I'm toweling off. Toweling off. <laughs> Mads, you wake up to see all of this happen. Mm-hmm. And right as you're taking in the scene with this groggy, I feel so gross. I'm covered in goo. Everyone is shouting. There's a fight happening here. There's a strangely calm conversation with a naked man happening over here. <laughs> yeah, this is nothing new. The door to the room opens up behind all of this happening. And a man walking in in some kind of a facsimile of a military uniform, big Burly fellow, both in the chest and in the (laughs) stomach as well, comes in and he has a very large gun. And right as your partner here is, you see him reaching over, trying to take something from this guy that he has pinned to the wall. That's when all of you hear the click and the sound of a capacitor charging that it, any of you with weapons training or at least skill as a bounty hunter are recognized as a very high-powered weapon being aimed at someone. What do you do? I'm going to very slowly and gracefully, expertly, step out of my tube and say, Sweetie, you don't want to do that. NPC here with a quick note. Due to a recording goof during our first session, part of that session unfortunately had to be discarded. After this break, the next segment begins with the recap that we used at the beginning of the second session. 
and then play begins from there. It just covers over some things that happened at the end of the first session. Story establishment kind of stuff. Once again, thanks for listening. After a harrowing, rude, gasping awakening from hypersleep, each of you is introduced to the dark truth of your new life situation. The ship you were on, like many others out there, was forcefully yanked out of hyperspace before it could reach its destination. It joined a seemingly endless graveyard of other hulks that all suffered the same fate left to float like an orbiting net around a lifeless planet. Some years have passed until the scavengers cracked open your cryopods and welcomed you to the dismal and depressing ranks of Serendipity Station. It was once an old colony ship from the wayback times, and it too, long ago, suffered the same fate as already described. Some time passed, its survivors turned it into a hub of salvage operations in this lost orbiting graveyard. From outside in the black, it looks like someone shoved a Borg cube through a melted geode and then hit it with an angle grinder a few times. It's only about a third operational. The majority of the ship is off limits, vented to space, or otherwise compromised. Some shadier folks have hidden out in those spots for nefarious reasons, and considering how rough the official populace already is, calling these others shadier is something of an extreme understatement. No one knows where the sector is. No one is coming to save the day. You're stuck in here. You are stuck out here until you die or you find a way out. Any questions so far? I think you answered this last time, but how long is this how long has the station been running? The like, station has been running for I think a couple of generations. So like forty years. About, yeah, forty years. But that's a good number. I like forty. I just turned forty. So that's what we're going with. Oh no, no. Here it says four hundred years old. The station's been running for four hundred years. Oh no, the station itself is four hundred years old. Yeah. The whole coming out of hyperspace thing. Oh yeah. Huh. I had to catch up. Hmm. It's been operational for about 400 years. Okay, right on. (laughs) Good, good. You're doing fine. (laughs) It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fine because if it's confusing. Android generation. It's all very confusing. Because they don't know how long we've been there. We don't know how long we've been there. Like, could have been three years. It could have been 70. Like, would anybody really know? (laughs) Uh, Sort of. The Android did do a little bit of cyber sleuthing and access the system to find out a little bit more data. Oh, Specifically, yes. right. Like That's these right. were the first two questions I asked. Ah, yes. Okay. Well, I will move on. Great. You're all given group bunks in private lockers in the working part of the station in a depressing and no frills general populace area where life support actually mostly functions. You are expected, read, forced to earn your way by crewing up. You want food, water, companionship, and a general life expectancy? You gotta earn it, and the only way to earn anything here is to join a crew of gravediggers. These crews take ships out to scavenge the endless sea of hulks that orbit this dead planet. You survive a few runs, you prove you got what it takes to stay alive, and maybe the PTBs will find a better use for you on board. An organization known as Drive Crew 6 runs the show here. And if you impress them, they might have better assignments for you. According to rumor, it happens a lot, especially as more scrap helps bring more of the station online. Do we have any idea why there are so many spacecraft holes in this area? No. From what we understand, there are ships that have been pulled in just like ours were. But we don't know why a ship was pulled we in. We don't know why any of the ships have been pulled in or by what mechanism. There That's the big thing we don't know. Thousands Excellent. of them out yeah. there. Okay. But like the... Like the there, there are, what, hundreds or thousands of inhabited planets. So, like, that's, what, a very low percentage of the total commerce over the years? Yeah. Every now and then, mm, ships in the lanes go missing. Yeah, now we know where. Oh, we're in the Bermuda Bermuda. Triangle. Yeah, we're in the Bermuda. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Oh, there's all my uh, socks. Yeah, we're a sock. We were were on a sock. We Um, might find the sock ship here. Yeah, so you you use the acronym PTB. Powers that be. Powers that be, okay. And for the most part, the powers that be are drive crew six. Correct. Okay. 
Memo to self, find out who runs the illicit substance trade stat. <laughs> well, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. You're all assigned to cell block, I mean, bunk row 14D. Uh-huh. Given coffin-sized bunks stacked four high along each side of narrow passages with stale air. There's a pair of heavy industrial prefabs set up in the hub that connects bunk rows 14A through F. An enterprising local named Doc Gordon has set up a pair of grav stills in them, sells their almost toxic output in a makeshift bar he calls the hospital. (laughs) Named for the fact that his alcohol is also the only easily available antiseptic most of you might ever see. New arrivals are assigned to crews in the order that they are thawed. That means you and those other popsicle people you thawed in with are going to be working together. So we're all bunking together? You are all bunking together. Okay, cool. Are you sure they're stacked four high and not five high for convenience? <laughs> Android doesn't need a bed. If you can count, <laughs> they're stacked four high. Damn. <laughs> now, I'm not quite sure if your character is mathematically inclined, but I oh, very much imagine so. that you are. Can I, like, cozy up to Mad? So, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, well, we'll see how, how that turns out. How many people are afraid of me? Yeah. <laughs> I notice no hands being raised. Yeah. Okay, well. You have an android, a crazy yeah. person, and an Irishman. <laughs> yeah, Slate's the only one who knows. The five of you have all been shoved together on a crew. How convenient. All the supplies that you currently have are either your personal effects or maybe they were assigned to you from a grab bag left on the bunk from the previous inhabitant. Who knows? These things are treasures to you. Hold on to them because some of the people down the bunk row are probably looking at you wanting to take them off of your corpse. Can we take them off of theirs? That is an option, <laughs> I would imagine. Uh, you, you could give it a try. We'll see how that works out. Survivors slash yeah, prison yeah. gang. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Hammercrawl. Yeah. <laughs> Loot uh, the bodies. So your crew has been assigned to a junked up hauler called the Shumway. Let's say that again, please. The Shumway. It's really just an old, close-range shuttle with big cargo pod welded to the back of it, guaranteed to completely disintegrate should it be forced down a gravity well. As in, like, Gordon Shumway? Uh, yes, actually. As in, like, Gordon Shumway. Mm, I mm. get that reference. Oh, yeah. I've seen better engineer enough of a second-year grad student. The Shumway's pilot is a space tramp named Ape Shite. <laughs> of indeterminate gender and a hodgepodge collection of accents likely born from a lifetime stowing away in the underbellies of countless star-hopping garbage scows. I like him already. You gather that he came into this situation in a style similar to your own and worked his way to a position of some value. The routine is simple enough. Apeshite takes your team out on the shumway to a husk in the graveyard. You go in, you get the salvage, and then you all fly back to serendipity by dinner time. Just whatever you do, don't fly too close to the planet or its moon. Those that do tend to fall out of the sky, and none of them ever return. And like I said, it's a dead planet, so what do you expect? What about the moon? You should go find out. <laughs> Make that your first <laughs> yeah. So where oh, there are, are some other people? Sorry, there are oh. some other people out there with you as well. There are some rank and file others, probably from your ship or maybe leftovers from a previous failed crew that have been shoved in as additional mercs, sitting on the sidelines, hanging out in the shumway, waiting for some of you to die so they can replace you. Are they all wearing red shirts, Prince Frey Chance? Well, there's a lot of rust here, so everything tends to turn a little bit red after a while. Yeah. Do we have a sort of direct boss? Do we have a direct boss or like person who's giving us mission assignments? Well, there's not one assigned to you. Okay. However, you have noticed in the few days that you've been here as you've been gearing up for an assignment that... Many of the crews more or less govern themselves, Hmm. meaning that you could, if you wanted, 
choose a leader for your group? Nah. nah. <laughs> I don't That's think a we, all, no. we, don't, we don't all know each other well enough yet to, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's been, it's been what, like a day and a half or something. Okay. Then if you don't choose a leader, you could each, if you wanted, take over. What, the ship? No, the group. Oh. Call the shots for the salvage team. Mm, you ever watched Survivor? No, I'm 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 not the masochistic. Who, the people in who that are too regard. like uh bossy just don't make they it. They don't make long. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not doing that. Well, and I think that in this situation I mean, I don't I don't know everybody here, but I think we're going to try to play to our I mean, we're going to try to play to our strengths. You know. Shoot things and beat up people? <laughs> well, yeah. You know. <laughs> Are we going to be a salvage crew or the local mafia? <laughs> I mean, I think that I think that our general like it, well, and then Slate can 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 maybe back me up or uh, totally disagree with me here. Uh, is that our like after I've calmed the fuck down and apologize for like losing my shit? Maybe, uh, like our goal is like keep a low profile, do what we got to do. Be cool. Find a way the fuck out of here. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. too. Yeah. Do we have any idea yet what is considered to be the most valuable things we can salvage or can we inquire? The most valuable things that you think are needed around here, at least if you want to kind of contribute to the ship and maybe or the station and kind of earn a name around here, go up in ranks, maybe get your own ship or something. Things like nav keys Computer banks that are intact, uh, working life support system components, medical equipment that is still usable, cryopods. Cryopods are great, especially if they are functioning and empty. Because, oh, and empty. And, oh, and empty. empty. Yeah. Why, what's the, why, why are they most valuable empty? People, because they, I would have thought people would be the thing that would be most valuable. Well, people are useful because it means more people work here, but it also... it's. What's the term? A dragon eating its own tail here. When you bring in enough people, you start to get overcrowded. And Roboros, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's... And then you don't have enough resources yeah. Damned if you do, around. damned if you What's, don't, I guess. Yeah. So, okay, so those are the things that are valuable. Um, Cannibalism. Who, <laughs> like, let's suppose we find something cool. Well, first off, it, might, it sounds like we've gone on a couple of missions already. You have not gone on a mission yet. Okay, so we're, like, getting this from other people we've talked yeah. to. Okay, cool. You've had some time to hang out at around the station, mostly around your cell block. I'm sorry, your habitation ring. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. For fuck's sake. Yeah. And, uh, we get the message. <laughs> you might as well just call Don't it a cell block. There. That's fine. Um, so, so, like, great. We know these things are valuable, but, like, let's suppose we find an empty cargo pod. Who hears about it? Like, who who is aware of what we're doing? Just us. And gives a shit. No, pres- like, we were told, like, if we find cool stuff, then, like, oh, these people are going to take an interest in us. So who is monitoring us so they know... Whether we're finding something oh, useful. That's a very good question. So are we giving a bag of tools and a mech or something to lift us stuff? As for who is monitoring you, you imagine it would be Drive Crew 6. You're not sure. So there's no mechanism. There's no one who comes by and is like, hey, what'd you guys find today? Well, when you come back on a ship. Yeah. Uh, when you when your shuttle brings you back from a run, you offload everything. To... To a requisitions person waiting there uh, in the dock who's like, oh, you know. Have we met any of those people? Sure. At this point, if you want to have spent some time hobnobbing and asking around. That's my number one priority. Okay. How social are you specifically? Do you uh, think like. I think I'm extremely social. Yeah. Okay. Very, very friendly, unthreatening, very nice, <laughs> very helpful, <laughs> extremely smart. Hard worker. Hard working. Yeah. Doesn't need to eat, so you're not taking up resources. I do need to eat, actually. But... Oh, you do? What? Yeah. What do you eat? Food. People. Um. Yeah. Food, yeah. Food. Really? Yes. But you're, but you're an android. I'm a. Bi- I, I I let you call me an android because it helps you understand. Oh. But I'm a. What I am is a bioadaptate, as I've described oh. to you. I have both. Um. To... I I don't understand a lot of that. A lot of that fancy <laughs> college stuff. So I I, pres- I appreciate I you that. you helping me out here. Yeah. Android, Wait, does that mean that Android you're... is a good first approximation? But okay. but there are assumptions you would be making using that term that are very incorrect. So you're like a living robot. Uh, that's that's maybe a 
better approximation even than Android. So, yes. So like, so like, and I don't remember what voice I used last time. So I'm, You're just, doing I'm great. just modeling you now. <laughs> uh, just, you, were, just, you were definitely using a sort of Southern accent. Was I last time? Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so like, instead of, instead of like using like electricity or like, or like, like nuclear shit for like power you like like us you use like food for fuel i want to interject that correct pronunciation is nuclear nuclear right. there you go nuclear nuclear oh god it's so well, hard gonna be pronounced nuclear. either way well, we can that's... actually ask the nuclear scientist we have with us over here yeah no it's 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 nuclear N- nuclear nu- nuclear no nu- nu- it's good nuclear. both ways nuclear. it's good both ways so well mads that's an excellent question um Doctor uh, doctors Storer and Bernard had differing opinions about my fundamental mechanisms of, of powering and function. And because I'm the only one of my kind, they did not see fit to investigate my interior over much. I, I don't like people investigating my interior either. I understand. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, dang it. Donnie pokes his head out from his bunk and goes, yeah, but do you have preferences on what you like to fuel with? Oh, I do enjoy food. Uh, any particular taste sensations, textures, anything? Oh, well, um, the doctors were themselves um, very boring eaters and felt that too much stimulation might be bad for me. Oh, they were British. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure what that means. <laughs> oh, guys, shite and be damned. <laughs> they were fans of uh, simple uh, fresh fish dishes and rice dishes. And yes. I don't want to ask one more weird question, but. Oh, I enjoyed your questions. Well, at least someone has to. Do you have to go number two? I do. <laughs> is it mechanical? Describe mechanical. Like, is it like, does metal pop out? No metal is involved. Fascinating. <laughs> Taking a break from Android pooping questions, <laughs> you're trying to make contact with someone yeah. on the, in the dock area, yeah. I guess. Do you have any skills tagged on your sheet that would equate to knowing how to talk the lingo around a docking area? I have linguistics. <laughs> There's linguistics. not a lot of skills that fall into that slot, uh, those the social slots. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, the game is pretty much devoid of any of things. Well, yeah, it's it's very much the old school style. You're expected to role play a lot of stuff. I'm I'm merely checking to see if you have anything like heavy machinery or. Relevant skills are linguistics, Uh computers, which I could use to infer, like they're tracking that kind of stuff at all digitally, um, and then archaeology. Let's linguistics. Also military training. Linguistics might come into play here. What I'm going to see is we're just going to, I just want to quickly roll some dice here to see if you managed over the last few days to actually make a friendly contact. Great. We're going to be rolling against your intellect. Okay. Wait, question. And so whatever your intellect is, since you have linguistics, raise it Trained. by 10. Yeah, yeah, okay. We don't, we haven't gone on any missions uh, I failed yet. by 10. You, you failed it? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, you weren't able, sorry, what did you fail it with? What was the rule? It roll? was a 74 okay. against a 61. Make sure if you ever roll doubles, let me know. Yep. Either good or bad, it's going to be really good or really bad. <laughs> Is it okay for me to move my mic? Oh, please do. If you want to get it in a more conducive location. I find myself looking at you frequently, yeah. so I'm going to put it over here. Oh, so okay. when I look at you, I will talk that, into it. That is so wise. Thank you. I'm going to be uh, scouting out like the docking area and being my normal gregarious self, trying to mix in with the more established crews as much as possible. I would like to go and find out if there is any kind of, again, using Mad and Mai's professional trade of bounty hunter, you know, sometimes, mm. sometimes, you know, stations like this might need some kind of enforcer, someone to go and kind of be a little bit of muscle, put the fear of God into somebody, or perhaps just go and take someone out. So, mm. uh, you know, just as a way to kind of see if that is a necessary thing on the station. Gotcha. Now, Poppy, yes. you had your hand raised. Well, we, so we haven't been on any missions yet. Correct. You have not. We You've have only not. been here a few days waiting, essentially waiting for triage to okay. be shipped out. So we've been just sort of getting acquainted with like where stuff is, like kind of getting the lay of the yep. land. How, are we free to move about? More or less. You can't go to any of the administrative areas. Okay. They certainly don't let you into any of the tech areas. Okay. There is a general area that kind of functions more or less like a big open sell what you got marketplace. Okay. <laughs> you might be able to like hawk some things there. 
there are people that pocket stuff and it doesn't appear like anyone pays attention to the small things. Mm, okay. If you try and sneak like scrap or like major mechanical ship component salvage past the scanners, then well, there have been rumors of people being ejected into space for that kind of violation. Oh, right. So, um, what I'm hearing you say is, I've been at the bar, <laughs> and we've been letting the android try to do as much work as possible. Well, I do know that Donnie, was it Donnie? Yes. Donnie, you're going to try and also make some contacts? Was that what I heard? Yeah. All right. Hanging around the, the dock, the returning salvage crews, trying to, you know, lend a casual hand offloading heavy bits uh using my skills of let's see uh zero g jury rigging heavy machinery mechanical repair to uh you smooth the way okay are any of those expert level uh or possibly master level uh jury rigging is expert level great that's going to give you a plus 15 percent on the again i'm going to make it an intellect based role here that is an 18 versus a 31, so 46. I rolled an 18. You rolled an 18 under a 46? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. I'm a, uh, 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 okay Sorry. Numbers. I should, I should <sighs> have been clear. <laughs> uh, no, that's a really good roll. You, you're definitely able to really quickly insert yourself into the operations here. You seem like you fit in. And... What are, what are you looking for out of this connection? I'm mostly just trying to raise my social credibility, uh, you know, just because it just like he's not a total waste of space. He's not a we didn't thaw out a tourist here. <laughs> he, he maybe hasn't proven himself yet, but uh, the man knows what he's talking about and isn't puffing up big in a false front. You know, uh, social being a gregarious person, social credibility. Okay, then what I will do is I'm going to give you an option here uh, to to choose the way that your success goes. You can, through this, have either met a pal, mm -hmm. not a friend, not a buddy, not a companion, but a pal. Right. Who will treat you friendly and maybe be a good source of some passing information. Or something could have happened that you helped out with and you instead get a favor. I will take a pal over a favor. Okay. All right. Yeah. So then you can't you drink meet with up favors. With, you can drink with pals. Yeah. You meet up with uh, this fellow. Uh, his name is Piotr. And you talk with him a bit, maybe chat with him, kind of lean over one of the rails as some things are being offloaded and uh, bandy a few jokes around, which he picks up immediately. <clears throat> the two of you kind of share a moment of, hey, we're both in the same line of work. We, I, I like to cut a year jib. Well, my jib's cut the same way as yours. So that kind of thing. You go, uh, you have a few drinks, not at the hospital. Oh. Uh, he shows you to another, basically an almost identical operation, but in another part of the ship. That's slightly <laughs> less toxic. Is it, just, is it just called the ER? <laughs> the urgent care. Yes, it is the urgent care. <laughs> it's, it's just affectionately known as the dock in a box. Oh, right, and so. when, I make it, when I make it to the doctor's lounge, I know I've made it. <laughs> there you go. Piotr, write that down. Already done. So part of my going into trying to see if anyone needs any muscle here, too, is also kind of showing off my, like, mad close combat quarter skills to everybody, too. It's like flexing with guns, but I have no guns except for these. Uh, underground batch uh, underground boxing ring. Ox oh, underground yeah. Boxing ring. Like 100 percent want to know if there's an underground boxing ring here. And I want to participate if there is just to kind of go and like assert some of my physical authority. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the skills that you have that could contribute to you quickly locating such a thing. Uh, well, my weapon specialization is unarmed combat. Okay. And so again, like I can overhear lingo terms people would use. that would be like, Oh, so that's where the fight's happening tonight. Because people probably are like not saying there is a fight tonight at this part of the ship. I'm probably more of, you know, using some kind of boxing lingo and whatnot that I would probably easily pick up on. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. Again, this is, we're going to be rolling intellect. And because you have that skill, you're going to get its bonus. What'd you get? Uh, 72 and my bonus would make it 58. Well, nothing is standing out. I mean, there's a lot of people here that look pretty beat up, 
but it doesn't look like Fight Club levels of beat up. Mm -hmm. It's more, I've seen some shit. I've been exposed to weird ass monsters on these random alien vessels. And my friend, you don't want to go out there. Oh my God, it's awful. I saw this thing and he ripped poor dude's head off. And you're like, oh, whoa, dude, whoa. Um, Yeah, Uh, I want want some of your drinking. Uh, (laughs) But nothing guides you towards any kind of underground boxing ring well i'm looking for food or i'm looking for like things that are just sitting around that i could consume and you know give to the group so i mean if it's sitting on the bunk you know and nobody's looking if it's behind the bar and the bartender's uh, just on going the other direction i like that if, you're stealing if, sustenance for if, us if, that's if understanding if there's a kitchen and there's a back door and there's a refrigerator close, you know, that type of thing. Again, we're all going to play to our strengths. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Well. He is a convict. It <laughs> sounds like you want to spend the last few days maybe picking pockets or making or finding with, or, things that were just casually left un, unobserved. Shiny things. You know? yeah. Things that... Uh, we're no. missing or misplaced. Misplaced. Yes, goods. misplaced. Yeah. You're going to find a place for them. I'm allocating. <laughs> <laughs> He's our quartermaster. This is yes. great. Well, Love it. this is going to be based on speed mm. to see if you can do this and not get caught. Now, do you have anything such as if you have any points in, for example, scavenging? Scavenging will be a good one. No, no, no. Scavenging in particular. Um, like outer rim, I got decent speed to begin with. His speed's outstanding, actually. Yeah. Okay. Do you have rim wise? Yes. If you have rim wise, I'll let you add that as a bonus to this. Okay. So that'll whatever your speed is, raise it by ten. By ten. And you want to roll under that. So I got a forty-five. My initial was forty-nine, and made it fifty-nine. So I'm under. That's a that's a good success. Nice. Hmm. Uh, well, oh, no, actually, this is pretty cool. I'm going to let you randomly roll some shit you found. Ooh. Okay, go ahead and roll for me a D100. Yeah, same thing again. 55. 55? Yeah. Here, Here's what you managed to scavenge over the last few days. <laughs> You find a couple stem packs nice. that were left on someone's bunk. Wait, what the hell are those? They're, oh, they're fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, what is it? Two of them? Uh, uh, yes, two of them. Stim packs grants an immediate D, oh, sorry, 2d10 to health and temporary increases speed and combat by 2d10 Ooh. each for 1d10 hours. Oh, it's meth. Basically. Cool. It's meth that right. gives you health. It's super Word. meth. There's a One danger D10 of addiction. Hours. There's a danger of addiction and or overdose if frequently used. Sure. Yeah, that checks out. You find a monocular. It's mm. like binoculars, but only one of them. Okay. So a spy glass? It's like kind of, but it's like yeah. tech. It's like oh, a tech yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. press a thing and it zooms and does, you know, that yeah. kind of cool shit. And you find uh, eight random assorted snacks so oh, good. <laughs> candy yes. bars there we go yeah you candy bar you can in, in whatever you order you want they could be candy bars they could be soda cans Juicy, chewy bars um they could be those little squeezy bulbs full of uh dried coffee uh just just add water and it it's the mix kind of thing <laughs> i'm or, thinking like or uh, urine yeah. or urine i'm thinking like Either chocolate punch. cake and uh lasagna i don't know well, uh, so there is, you do find a, a very small, flat, shaky, full of something box that says lasagna on it. MRI type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, what do you, what do you want, what do you want to trade for that uh, candy bar? No, well, I mean, we're buds once we get on this. Okay, you share. Yeah, candy bar. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll get you some of the good shit from the hospital. Yeah, I have, I have, a, I have a contact. <laughs> there we go. Water it down a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> did you want to get up to something, or did I already do you? I forget. Bobby. Oh yes, I want to get up to something. Sorry, I'm coloring a bat. Um, 
<laughs> it's a thing. I uh, so my plan. So my my biggest strength is strength and combat. Uh, strength of forty three, speed thirty nine, intellect thirty, combat forty one. I I think that the deal we've sort of made here is that the impression we're going to give to the other uh, crew inmates, I mean crew members, is <laughs> is that he's the muscle of the operation. And who are you pointing at? Uh, Xander. Okay. Sorry. Who's Xander? Like, Slate. Okay, that guy. Slate, yeah. that guy Rick's right there. Slate. I mean, we're on radio, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so that so I'm sort of the sleeper cell. And she's actually stronger than I am. Cuz I'm actually stronger than him and I am I am batshit crazy. Um <laughs> we we figured that we one figured out. That out last batshit time. crazy. Yeah. But now everyone see me freak out when we first got there and everyone thinks that I'm maybe just batshit crazy and I'm not a threat, you see. The gig is up. So I no they they think I'm not a threat. So now that I've got my shit together and I'm calm, we decided that I am the sleeper cell. So my I've decided that my job is to is to try to identify the other people on board who are in similar situations as us who are going to be easily manipulated to our gain. So do we all shower together? Are these like co shower? <laughs> Shower. I'm not sure we earned shower. I don't think they. We get maybe a wet nap every no. other week. Could you like, get a deal out, Sigurd. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, note to self: When Alan raises his hand, it's not important. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, tracking down people that you oh. think could be easily manipulated yeah. is some um, that's that's some top level psychological stuff there. So I'm I'm getting a little like creative with my with my skills here. Then I'm, I'm going to get creative with telling you how you can't use combat to do that, <laughs> but you could use intellect to try and find some people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've got an intellect of thirty. <laughs> You know, seems fine. Um, that's probably fine. So I'm hanging out at the bars. I'm hanging. I'm. I've got. I'm. I'm good at both. Since we're bounty hunters, we're both. I'm assuming just really good at social engineering in general. Yeah. Like as part of our trade. Um. So, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm keeping an eye out. For who do I think is? I'm basically a sociopath. Well, I just want to say that. I also watched The Mandalorian recently, and he was not very good at associating with people. Well, he was <laughs> in a tin can also. I'm just saying. He was badass, but he, he wasn't really good at talking. Yeah, no. I can be very charming, I'm sure. Okay. Well, what I will do is have you roll an intellect check here. Okay. You're a skill... Uh, I mean, this is some this is some psychology stuff here. Do you have... Anything related to psychology as a skill here? Mm, Maybe. No, I have first aid. I mean, psychology is actually a skill. It is. Yep. That's true. I you have, don't have sophantology? I don't have sophantology, okay. no. Yep. I have close quarter combat and weapon specialization <laughs> and yeah. first aid. Yeah, those really aren't going to help you find a mark, no. but they... Uh, they could come in handy if you piss that mark off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I will have you go ahead and straight up roll under your intellect. Okay. So that's a 30. Uh, 61? A 61 is not a success. Fortunately, it's not a critical success. Or, I'm sorry. Fortunately, it's not a critical failure. Yeah. You spend the few days sort of lurking around in the shadows. Um Doing what you think is an approximation of looming, but not <laughs> quite pulling it off. Uh, you do get a lot of weird looks from people. Mm -hmm. In the end, what you have done is marked yourself God damn as it. a weirdo. Cool. People <laughs> okay. will leave me alone. Well, that remains to be seen. Slate. I'm not living here alone. If you can't find the person who's easily manipulated... Then it's you. God damn it. <laughs> Slate, I need a new tactic. This is not working. Uh, have you tried staring at him real funny like you usually do? I, I mean, I've tried all of that. Mm. Oh, you I thought she was flirting. You want me to talk to him? No, I think I think we just got to come up with a new plan about how we're going to how we're going to work this out. 
Well, what we'll probably need to do is go and actually go on a few missions here to get some salvage. That way we can actually get some money, show our worth, go and, uh, yeah. you know, work our way around a little bit. Otherwise, these guys ain't going to give us the time of day. Yeah, I want to I want to I want to I want to conserve my amazing strength for all this salvage work we got coming up. I don't want to be boxing like you. Well, I know it's like hitting things, but I know, baby. <laughs> well, what we should probably should do, though, is again, once we go on a few runs, we'll start observing these other teams. Once we observe these other teams, we can probably find a mark even easier after that. All right. I'm just going to go back to the hospital and have a drink. All right, I'm going to join you then, darling. Okay, that's great. At one point when the those two are out of the cell block, I mean, bunk room, Do- Donnie turns to Tulip and goes, so have you figured out whether those two are hitched or not? I don't believe that they are. Ah, none of me business, but damn, it's a hard tight to sell. I have a difficult time imagining the two of them involved with each other physically. I have a hard time involved with, uh, imagining them involved with any other human being. Oh, oh, that's not hard to imagine at all, at least for me. Oh, I've imagined it. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> they don't call him the Jolly Roger for nothing. He just, just sort of spontaneously materialized next to you just to deliver well, this line. I, I am entirely used to I own Jolly, could you say more about that? Is there one of them that you've particularly thought about? Well, the minute we came out of cryo, uh, she was naked in front of me. Well, what are you going to do? You know? Oh, you're primarily heterosexual then? Yes. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> it seemed like you were really focused on a towel. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, I think we should probably go and Meet back at the oh yeah we're at bunk. the bar. <laughs> After our drink, we should meet up meet up back at the bunk and then kind of go and try to formalize a salvage run that we should do so we can prioritize and see what we want to do, and make sure we get this done properly, and impress these assholes. Dig. So it sounds like Rex or Slate is stepping up into the position of administration. Well, I do fire all the paperwork for all our bounties that we get. All right, congratulations, Captain Slate. <gasps> Or oh. <laughs> team captain Slate. I always knew you'd be going places, Slate. I so know it. I always take you with me, darling. The next question that's this is the most important one. What's your team name? What do you call yourself? Is there someone who's asking us that? I, as the judge of this game, am asking you. The oh, warden is actually oh, oh. what so we've got... the GM is called. The warden of your cell block. You do know. we not know that you're a convict? Uh, no, I haven't told anybody. I don't think we do, no. Do we know? I think we were probably picking up on it because that's kind of our profession. Cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're but, we're being cool. Like yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. our mark. We're cool. Sure. Um, yeah, and I'm providing a candy bar. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> it's, it's Criminals are useful for a wide variety yeah. of reasons. Exactly. As long we as candy have, bars yeah. can come in, we're good. So we've got a convict <laughs> who's a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, <laughs> we've got Slate Bounty Hunter. We've got Donnie. You're a engineer. Mm-hmm. I'm a damage control technician. Damage lot. control technician, whatever the hell that is. We've got Tulip the Android, and we've got Mads, the batshit crazy bounty hunter. Hmm. And... A handful of unnamed mercenaries who eh. might form the ranks of your next player characters when you inevitably die. Right. What? Right. I'm never going to die. <laughs> they already tried that. True. They did. <laughs> now we'll see if they get a second chance. <laughs> what's they the name, of the, what's the the name of the ship we came on? The Shumway. Oh, no, no. The ship that you came What's on. Wasn't it like Prospero's? No, that was the place no, we were going to. you were to. heading to a place called oh. Prospero's Dream. Uh, I had a ship name. Oh, my God. I don't remember. Uh, oh, uh, the Jade Elegy. Jade Elegy. Oh, Elegy. Elegy or Eulogy? Elegy. What's elegy. the difference? What's, a, what's an Elegy? Jade Space Elegy? I suspect if it's like many of the ships I've uh, served on, it's because the person filling out the paperwork was a little loose with their grasp of the English language. I see. Well, you know, we were all going to Prospero's dream before we were pulled here, so that would make this Prospero's nightmare. I like it. Ooh. Team Hell. <laughs> oh, it's just another way of saying um, an inscription on a tombstone. I like like a Team Ireland for I, O'Toole over here. It doesn't matter to me. A ship's a ship's, a crew is a crew. I work with one and then I pass on to the next. I like Prospero's nightmare. Prosperous nightmare. Prosperous. Oh, okay. Mm. I'm gonna keep mispronouncing it. That's fine. How about we just we do nightmare? Team nightmare. 
I'm You're not fine. a fan of multiple syllables, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> my intellect's low. Okay. It's my understanding that a good name can be shortened in a number of different ways. Oh, yeah. Tulip flower, how that? It's That's not. why I call you. By that standard, it's not a very good name. I'll agree, but I didn't have any choice in the matter. <laughs> oh, I, but that's why I call him the. the. <laughs> Jay, we just gonna call you like Jay the R, J R or something. J- Jer, J- J- JTR, JTR. Uh, I like J- nightmare. I like nightmare too. I think that's just fine. How about yeah. nightmare eulogy? I like eulogy. But I'm never going to have one. Are we a goddamn salvage crew or a 90s goth band? (laughs) Two things can be true. (laughs) I like Nightmare Eulogy. Nightmare Eulogy? That's fine with me. All right. This is a team building exercise after all. (laughs) (laughs) What what was your first? What nightmare? Jade Nightmare? Prosperous. Prosperous Prosperous Nightmare. nightmare Or Nightmare Eulogy. I like Nightmare Eulogy. Nightmare Eulogy. I like you. Plan on writing lots of those for folks soon with my fists. Yeah. Well, with a group named and a more or less uh, assumed leader, things seem to be moving along into uh, a direction of at least some semblance of order here. Perhaps your group has a little bit of hope of surviving this. Maybe some of you will come out of this ordeal unscathed and maybe even one day make it out of this godforsaken system in the backwoods of who knows where. After a couple days, in the evening, you get the order that you're shipping out in the morning. 0600 From station who? time. I guess at this point you have like little terminals or something. Yeah, we'll say your, your beds have terminals. Uh, on each of your beds, on your crew, you get ship out orders. That a appear. hologram pops You're heading up. out. Tomorrow morning, 0600 station time. Ugh, it's early. So, <laughs> Mads is still drunk. Ugh. <laughs> uh, so, when we ship out on these, so it's, it's a number of crews per ship, is that correct? No, each ship gets a crew. This is one crew. Okay, yep. cool. There's a number of ships out there. There's many other crews. There are thousands of these hulks out there that are being scavenged. Sometimes crews don't come back, but frequently they do. So the other question I have then is, have we been able to maybe overhear any chatter amongst the other folks in the commentary about potential leads of where some good salvage might be? Or is it just like we're throwing a fucking dart out there and figuring you it out? You have a target already chosen. Oh, good. Yep. Have we been able to get any sort of like, since we don't know where the fuck we are or what the hell we're doing or what this place is about, have we been able to scrounge up any information from other people about like helpful tips, tools of the trade. Like, what have we learned in the last couple of days? I've been socializing with Piter, and he's given me a couple of pointers here and there. Okay, Donnie, Hi. since we're shipping out in the morning, and right here we're shipping out in the morning, as I understand it. Yes, yes. And we've been assigned this ship. Um, what was the name of it again? The Shumway. Yes. yes. Um, would it be advisable for us to go to the Shumway and? Make sure that it's in functioning condition before we are due to leave. Well, I mean, you can you can do that or you can take it on faith. I mean, which would you prefer in this situation? So, Donnie, is there anything you want me to add to that (laughs) ship before we take off? All I'm going to say is, is that perhaps it's a good to see if the ship's in work in order. And perhaps you might want to be careful about it because some captains get a little prickly about it, and uh, anyone who goes by the name of ape shit uh, is ape more shite. likely to be the latter than the former. The orders indicate that um, ape shite is the is the pilot, and somehow they've they've marked down um, oh what's his name oh yes Rexor as the uh, as our captain. Well, Re- Rexor, Rexor, I'm sorry to disturb you. I see that you're sleeping, uh. Captain. Uh, Do you mind if we go down to our ship to make sure that it's in functional order before we depart in the morning? That probably sounds like a pretty good idea. Everything here looks like it's been slapped together with a little bit of gum and duct tape and a big old pile to go fuck yourself. So that seems like a pretty smart idea. You are a superb and perceptive leader. I know. (laughs) Shall we? Also, go make sure you get some of them uh, fucking, uh, you know, that that hooch from the docks place. Go make sure you get a couple of those in there because we're going to have celebratory drinks in the wink back Um, once we get home. I'm on it. We will make all appropriate efforts in that direction. I don't like efforts. I like I me like solutions. The, me and the quartermaster. Mm-hmm. Solutions being alcohol. Me and That's the quartermaster. That's about the bulk of my science. 
<laughs> Me and our quartermaster here, uh, Jr., are gonna uh, go rustle us up some provisions for our for our mission. Yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll uh, make excuse it happen. me, it's JTR. JT, I'm sorry, JTR. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. I want to be doing a bunch of shots by the end of this mission when we come back. Hopefully, all of us all alive. That's the point, right? Well, well, we'll make it back alive. Don't even talk like that. All right, I just see some of these guys. That call I'm gonna live forever. Up. I'm not worried about it. So Donnie and I go down to the ship. Check it out. All right. We're going to take a look around. Don't I don't mean for it to take a huge amount of time. It's just let's check it out before we get on and take off. When you get down to the shuttle bay area that you have been directed to show up at tomorrow, mm-hmm. quote unquote, morning, you find that there is a connected. So this is this is a massive fucking colony ship. That has room for a, a vast number of other spaceships or smaller shuttles and whatnot that can kind of like dock in and connect. And when you cross into the the, the massive shuttle bay, you're actually stepping into a zero G area. Uh, you are given these uh, clips that you can attach to your belt and kind of move along these rails for those of you unused to the motion. Uh, Donnie disdains those. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but uh, all of the ships that are ready to go tomorrow, because they always ship out in the morning and wait for people to come in again by dinner time. You see 12 ships currently docked up. This place is full of shuttles and scows and little tramps ready to go out and get that sweet, sweet salvage. Yours is actually not too far away. You're like seventh in the queue. This ship, this junked up old short range shuttle that literally has a massive cargo crate welded to its side. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the question is, can we get reassigned to a different one <laughs> if we get too left to manipulate that computer? <laughs> you, you ponder this question as you look around and realize that most of these other ships... Aren't much better. better. <laughs> <laughs> Yours actually isn't the worst looking here. Is this is this bay currently very active? It's actually not all that active. There are a number of maintenance technicians out there, and you see that other crews had the same idea as you. <laughs> and actually, in fact, for that amazing idea to give yourself an XP. How do I yeah. do that? Nicely they done. Just, there's one XP. Just mark it down. Oh, the, at the very bottom of your notes. Oh. Okay. Uh, if you get 10 XP, you get to level one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. At my current rate. <laughs> Donnie, surveys, <laughs> Donnie surveys the situation and goes, well, at least we uh, appear to have a ship where the pilot isn't always in a zero G suit because it's exposed to vacuum. There are. A number of station security out here as well, making sure that nobody gets any fancy ideas. Mm -hmm. Are there any of the ships where the people who uh, are responsible for the ship did not get this bright idea? It's a good number of them, yeah. Is there one, is the one next to our ship in that state? (laughs) (laughs) Why, yes, it is. Ah. No one is monitoring the ship next to yours. It actually looks to have once been something of maybe a very a luxurious pleasure yacht but it looks like only half of it is still there <laughs> the other half has been welded shut these people make whatever they can move move donnie i i think we may have found our first salvage target <laughs> can well, you, you switch know. the name plates i mean <laughs> You know, accidents do happen in space, and you know, absolutely. Scratch the vin first. Scratch the vin. Do, do you think they would uh, appreciate us rescuing another crew? Because uh, you know that capacitor on that engine looks a wee bit dodgy, if you know what I mean. Well, if it proves that this ship is non-functional, then we would be saving them the bother of going out and dying in it. Oh, I. I. What if we leave at 530? Which which parts should we remove to make that capable? Just take off. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps if you gave me a list of of components that our ship would benefit from. 
Well then, uh, I'm going to do a quick assessment on this and <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, would that be mechanical repair or heavy machinery? Mechanical. I you don't could make have a case engineering. For jury rigging for engineering. Oh, I'm going to go with jury rigging. You could make a case for any of those skills <laughs> as long as you make the case. Um, so here's the thing. Everything here is jerry rigged. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yep. Even the crews. The society I, is jerry rigged. As I am, a, I am a first class. Well, okay, third class <laughs> damage control technician, and jury rigging is what we do. So I'm going to take a look at this and go. That wasn't done well, and is easy to undo, and point it out to Tulip. To, okay. to clarify here, Nathaniel, the plan, like the plan I understand here is that between the two of us, we're going to assess the ship. Mm-hmm. He's mostly going to do the work because he knows about the mechanical shit, right? Yeah. We're going to assess the ship. We're going to figure out what can be reasonably improved. We're going to steal the parts from the neighboring ship and we're going to put them on ours. Exactly. I don't. Well, OK, <laughs> just to assess it. Yep. You don't need a role for that. No. You have that skill on your sheet. You can look at all the ways that you could probably jury rig it if you could get close yep. enough to it. To mm, our ship. To our we ship. can just walk onto our ship. Oh, sorry. I just yeah. understood what you were yeah. saying. Step one, yeah. assess our ship. Okay, yes. gotcha. Step two, steal parts from other ship. <laughs> Step three, improve our ship. Well, then I will have you roll to assess your own <laughs> ship. Okay. Because this could fuck you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to roll jury rigging, and that's intellect. Uh, we'll make it under intellect, yeah. Okay, so my intellect's 13 plus 15 oh for God, jury you're rigging. Terrible at this. Sorry, 31. Oh, sweet I had, Jesus. I had a dyslexic <laughs> moment. <laughs> 46. I got so scared for a second. Uh, I'm rolling under a 46. The ship just, the ship just explodes. 43. Barely under it, but under it. Oh, thank God. Now, describe to me what exactly... I'm sorry. Give me a visual description of the methods that you were applying here. So... With a keen eye of someone with long experience stabilizing damaged spacecraft, he Donnie looks over it, assessing what the easiest, simplest way to improve this ship's operation is. He happens to notice that one of the maneuvering thrusters is cobbled together. It doesn't even have a direction a working directional gimbal. So it's a, it's a fixed position vector thruster. So for fine maneuvers, it's only going in like one direction. <laughs> he goes, that can be fixed with just a simple, a couple simple parts. What's on the next ship next door? In fact, it could be fixed with the simple application of unplugging one cable that is currently plugged into a spot where another cable belongs. Mm. Now that cable is the cable that should be there. It's just dangling and it's actually been kind of tucked behind something so nobody would see it. There's <laughs> another cable which looks to be patched in and uh, someone has clearly ham fistedly wired the receiving in so that it's sort of it's like instead of actually being a plug, it's like 30 little copper wires that were sort of shaped into a plug form it. and shoved into this thing. And they go off somewhere into the ship. Unfortunately, you lose track of it. You don't know what it's connected to. Hmm. Um, I will use my computer abilities. I will. So I walk over to one of the data ports. Okay. Um, I detach my pinky finger. <laughs> I insert the stump into the uh, data port and I interface with the ship computer. And you're doing that like near the. Yeah, system? I want to like okay. run the system diagnostics gotcha. to get like maybe trace where that's going to basically to support his action to get additional information. Okay, then here's what I will do I'm going to have that. That's a weird ass thing that you did as mm-hmm. far as any human who is nearby would see. There is a human nearby who is who could observe this happening. You know, Donnie, it's weird. Like, she's an android, yeah. But and you bio, know this. Bio-adapted. Sorry, a bioadapted individual. But you know this, but still the ripping off of the finger and shoving into a wall is strange. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Unsettling. 
So I want to give you uh, one point of stress for that. Barely any it is stress. an unsettling. Almost vision. no stress at all. Almost basically. no stress at all. So you're interfacing, trying to find out any specific or just general information. So two things: one, run the system diagnostic. Did they so, have to make like, it out of bone? Does the computer does the computer itself know about any major system flaws? And then secondly, like where does that thing go to? Gotcha. Well, this will be an intellect roll, and Great. again, if you have any computer related things, I do. add it as a bonus. I do. And I made it. Great. Did what'd you get? Um, I got exactly a seventy. Oh wow! Uh, right on the nose. So the computer, <laughs> the computer is unaware that it is aware that something has been patched regarding that system, meaning that the computer has been told it doesn't know anything about this. So there's a mysterious system that's plugged in there that it, yeah. that they're intentionally trying to deny us knowledge of and deny the ship itself knowledge of. Correct. Okay, this is not good. <laughs> so there's two courses forward on this. <laughs> there's the the simpler course, which is you and I just fix it now. There's the other option, which is tomorrow, Morton. When you, me, the rest of the crew, this ape shite, the good Lord and everyone is out here. And you happen to look over and look at that and go, should that be like that? And I go, no, it shouldn't. And uh, everyone's amazed by our weebler brilliance. Oh, I understand the social engineering of it. That makes perfect I sense. I understand. Um, the concern I have is that this is intentionally placed here in a deceptive way. I and it seems unlikely that that was done for our best interests. Oh, agreed. It's just whether or not a private discovery or a public discovery makes a better sense. I am very curious to know who did this and why mm -hmm. and to what purpose. I will be back in a moment. I go to the other ship. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us took a large amount of stress during the last session. Is it still that large amount or does it decrease over time? There's a way to decrease stress. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. There's a system behind it. We got to do some uh, dice rolls. And, okay. Yeah. Remind me before you ship out. Be like, oh yeah, what about our stress? During this on the on our <laughs> ship, the fucking what's it called? The Shumway. Shumway. The yes. Shumway. Do they notice anything else out of the ordinary? Like worrisomely out of the ordinary. That's a word, right? Worrisomely. Yeah, that's a really, that's a good word. Is that a good word? Yeah. That's actually my favorite word and Mads and I love it when you use it. Ah, no. <laughs> Are you sure they don't have a relationship going? And we're not there. They we're have a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't have a sexual relationship. JCR and I are out getting grub for our getting provisions. Yeah. I wasn't cur uh, worrying whether they were boning or not. I was more concerned if they were an item. <laughs> oh, they're an item of some sort. Ah. <laughs> anyway, do they, do they notice anything else? You don't know. I well, I'm, I'm, I'm. Somebody <laughs> asked that question. We're working on it. Okay. Once they come um, back, so Once Nathaniel, come back. I just want to quickly go over to their ship, see if it has a similar component installed. Okay, so going over to the other ship, you just sort of walk down the plank. You you pull yourself along the 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 plank way. Uh, Here's still, what I do. You've still got the thing hooked, right? Yeah, I walk. Okay. I walk out of our ship, yep. away from our ship. Sort of mill around for a second and then walk over to the other ship like I'm supposed to be there because they're not keeping track of me. I just <laughs> <laughs> I'm the crew coming to check out this ship. Did you leave your finger behind? Oh, Donnie, no. yeah, will, I did. Okay. Donnie will be loudly whistling and making a point of inspecting the ship he's on and chatting up people who walk by in order to give cover and distraction. <laughs> Being a loudmouth, gregarious Irishman. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to have you do any kind of rolls to sneak onto the ship, but just note that being found on someone else's ship is now a stake of failure. I understand. Okay. Oh, you could talk your way out of that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I must be on the wrong ship. That would be the, that's, that's, yeah. that's mm. the fallback. That's why this is so confusing. Oh. My bad. I've already taken my finger off, so I just go to the nearest port inside this ship, stick it in there. Okay. 
Um, yeah, <laughs> you float into the, the entrance way of this other ship and plug into the nearest terminal you find. Mm-hmm. I'll have you make uh, another roll. Same thing. Close yeah, this. no problem. Yeah? What'd you get? 32. 32. Oh, wow. What is your total? 70. Uh, 70, yeah. Damn. Damn. What's What's, your, what is your base ability, intellect? My base intellect uh, is 51. Holy shit. Okay, oh, wait, no. Well. Oh, maybe I was doing the wrong math here. Apologies. That looks like a 51 to me. It is a 51. Yeah. No, no, I was off by um, some, because the computers are only plus 10. Not plus 15. Not plus, never mind. I blew it. <laughs> Arith- math is my is my strong point arithmetic is not oh, okay so your base skill is 51 yeah and so 61 is my target 61 you yes. want to get 61 or less yes yes gotcha yeah. and you got a 40 32 32 oh that's yes. fantastic okay great okay good you just want to get under it got it got it yeah this ship is not modified the same way now there are many other <laughs> modifications and overrides in this ship's computer okay but not the exact same one interesting okay is there any particularly um high quality com- computational component on this ship it does have a recently installed system connected hollow system like a, a hollow projector hollow vid cool yeah what would that be useful for entertainment that's it i bet we can come up with something more interesting than that i steal it okay (laughs) breaking into the ship itself to actually get inside and take anything that's going to require some rolling oh so i'm not inside of it right now you're like at the entrance way to the ship plugged into its little uh oh you can always bring me into what would i be rolling against you'd have to override the computer to to authorize to let you in so it'd be computers you could use hacking I don't have hacking, but I do have computers. Um, Predecessor skill. You uh, computers could. You wouldn't get the full bonus. You don't make it a five percent bonus. I'll do it. But I guess computers (laughs) would be relevant. Sounds great. (laughs) Or if you have some kind of lock picking or breaking and entering skills. No, no, no. I have archaeology or or strength. You could rip the door off. Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. Go ahead and roll intellect plus. Computer plus five, sorry. You know what? Plus five. Nope, failed. What'd 80. 80? Yeah. It sets off not a loud alarm, mm-hmm. but it does, you know, uh, access denied, intrusion attempt logged. Okay. And it shows a picture. <laughs> it takes a picture of me. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> that little, that little, uh, doorbell thing that's just mounted right above the and it just looks like the think, worst dmv pop- i think this is the kind of thing that causes have. me to start to panic a little bit i'm like well should i ha- now i have to break in to be able to delete that picture of myself oh, well boy. we'll roll to see if you panic uh failing that i'll say we'll give you three stress and uh, now that that has happened let's roll to see if you do panic uh this is first going to be a stress check roll 2d10 yeah okay did you roll over your current stress total? No. You rolled under? Oh, I rolled over. Yes, over. easily okay. over. Way over. If you roll over, then you don't panic and you relieve one stress. I don't panic and I relieve one stress. That was fun. Congratulations. All right. Uh, Donnie. Donnie. <laughs> I am waiting your orders or, well, I'm, a sense of what you're doing. I'm tempted to push my luck. They have a picture of me. As a intruder, not a liberator of useful components. <laughs> well, I would point out that there are two courses of action, yes. as there are in many things. Yes. You, you yeah, learn no. over time that life is rather dualistic. Yeah. <laughs> One is beg off where we are. Yes. And then just apologize later if need be for getting confused as to the right ship. Correct. Two... Uh, double down and go for broke. Do you have any advice in this matter? Well, we are new here. Yes. And uh, I don't know how y'all's kind are when it comes to spacing, but uh, suck and vacuum sucks for uh, my kind. Suck and vacuum? Hey, they put you out in an airlock and you learn the hard way to breathe cold. I'm unclear which of these courses you're advising me to take. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you think you can pull off better? I see. I see. 
Um, I'm uh, not entirely associated with your full set of skills and panoply of abilities. I, uh, I try to try once more to in, <laughs> to intervene on the system. Well, you won't be able to get into the ship because you already failed that. Oh, but, I see. Uh, you can try if you want to intervene in the system and maybe erase that log. Yes, definitely. You could try that. That's what I want to do. That's going to be the same thing. All right, let's do it. This time, let's be successful. 51 did it this time. Okay. You you quickly figure out how to, uh, actually quite easily, erase that log uh, because the security system on this thing actually isn't all that high tech. Okay, great. Yeah. I leave. <laughs> Mission successful. As we're walking away, Donnie turns to Tulip and goes, Has he, have you ever seen a video of yourself when you're doing that? I have not. The look on your face, it's 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 a thing. I'm glad to know that I have human-like expressions. You could say that, yeah. <laughs> Vaguely erotic. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, friend. We've reached the end of Biker's Dice Apart.